Good evening, intuitives. This is actually my second attempt to film this video. I tried early this morning before work, and it didn't record, of course, because for once I was quite happy to try to post it and didn't deal with my crippling perfectionism to be like, eh, maybe I should redo that. I kind of dropped the ball. So I'm going to do my best. It's probably not going to be as good because that's how it goes to get out what I wanted to get out. And the video topic I want to talk about today is why the narcissist wants to keep you having low self-worth. Like a narcissist doesn't want you to know your self-worth. And there's multiple reasons for that. And I want to focus on two main scenarios. Like, you know, when I say the narcissist doesn't want you to know your self-worth, I mean that, of course, in a romantic relationship with a narcissist, but also in the sense of working for a narcissistic boss. And I'm going to be using examples uh, from things I observed from what friends of mine went through in the past. Usually, I think this is from our early mid-20s, before I knew what any of this stuff was. And my own experiences with a narcissistic boss. So, in general, why doesn't a narcissist want you to know your self-worth. Well, of course, they get their narcissistic supply off of controlling you, exploiting you, and keeping you down. But in truth, you don't need the narcissist. The narcissist needs you. So if you don't know your self-worth, you're easier to control. You're easier to manipulate. You're less likely to stand up to the narcissist. You're less likely to challenge the status quo out of a sense that the narcissist has you so beaten down that you at least on some level believe that you can't do any better, that you need the narcissist, and that if you break free of that situation and head out on your own, things are going to drastically fall apart, and you will be far more miserable, and you should just continue with the status quo and stay in that narcissistic relationship or work for that narcissistic boss. And deep down, they know this. You know, they are grifting off of your talent. In a narcissistic relationship, they're grifting off of potentially your friends, your influence, your money, or you're just a trophy or a possession to them. In a narcissistic job, your boss is probably having you do the bulk of their responsibilities for them while they collect a much higher salary and have much more prestige and they're keeping your career advancement down so they can protect their own cushy spot. That's something I've gone through and I've observed, particularly common with out-of-touch boomer bosses. So I'll start there. The narcissistic boss. The narcissistic boss wants to keep your self-worth down for many reasons. One, they see your talent, they see you as a good employee, good work ethic, and they want to exploit that. They want you to do as much as possible, taking on the bulk of their responsibilities so they can kick back and, you know, put in a 25-hour week, take multiple vacations, make their six-figure salary or more in certain industries. In my case, this was, I'm speaking about my last job as an assistant golf course superintendent, where I was the number two in the golf course management team, and my boss, the superintendent, was and out of touch, over the hill, pushing 70, baby boomer who was, you know, a big name in the industry back in the 80s, but it's since become massively out of touch and would best be described as a has-been, who thinks everything that he's ever done is the greatest, and of course, you know, everything the way it was done in his prime, i.e. the 80s, was the pinnacle, and nothing should change from that because that was perfection, and that's pretty common with a lot of boomer narcs. Any any deviation from when they were at their height is wrong and bad and should be ignored and everything should remain frozen in time for when the narcissist was at their peak. So in the, say, in the case of a narcissistic boss, uh, the narcissistic boss will keep their, their target, usually their number two, you know, their assistant manager of some kind. Uh, they won't show you anything. One of the one of the things my narcissistic boss told me right off the bat after after uh, I was hired 
when I was asking about his past and trying to learn to advance my own career, he said to me, well, it's not my job to teach you how to take my job. Now, this is a 69-year-old guy saying this to, uh, I was 28 at the time. So a guy who's 69 and a millionaire, the first thing that comes to his mind is I got to make sure this guy doesn't take my job in three or four years because I'm so important. I'm the greatest that there ever was. I can never retire. No one can be as good as me. But at the same time, I have to keep this person down Why I completely rely on him. Yeah. So in my situation, you know, I was forming all the chemical mixtures to spray for all the diseases and growth regulators and insects and all that fun little witch's brews that I used to mix up. And I had complete autonomy to do that, you know, bought all the chemicals and ran the crew and did all that stuff because my boss, the stuff that he would suggest that I do hadn't been legal in a couple decades and those products, you know, had long since gone off the market. That's how out of touch he was. But he'd gladly take credit for uh, how disease-free the course was, you know, how great the aesthetics are and all that. That, that was all him, even though the only input he had uh onto those uh onto those pest management programs was suggesting that I use products that hadn't been legal or manufactured since the early 1990s but at the same time he would tell me how you know I I'm so lucky to work there and you know to work under him is such an honor and what a big shot he is and you know that pay your dues is what you signed up for seven days a week and all that, and it'll all work out in the end. Basically do his job for him while he took four-day weekends and worked nine to two and did whatever he wanted while he collected his six-figure salary. And that is not a good place to be. Because after you hear that and hear that, and if you're already not in a good place in life, you'll begin to believe what the narcissist is telling you and you'll begin to question your own self-worth you'll begin to wonder if you truly could do any better and in a work situation in a bad economy that's not a good position to be in especially if it's a job you already hate the last thing you want is for something to get worse now deep down the narcissist knows this is all ruse this is all smoke and mirrors and the last thing they want is for you to start questioning them, for them to have questions they can't answer, for you to stand up for, for yourself and say no or complain that you're being mistreated because then the jig's up. Because those are questions they don't have answers for and that'll quickly be followed by you going out the door, which then they can no longer exploit your talent, can no longer grift off of your work and will actually be responsible for the responsibilities that they should be responsible responsible for anything, i.e. they'll actually have to do their job. And in a lot of these situations, including mine, the narcissist isn't up for doing the job anymore. They've, like I said, long since become out of touch and have relied on others for so long that if they actually had to do the functions they were supposed to be doing, they wouldn't be able to do it because their methodology is so outdated. Now, in romantic relationships... You see this dynamic, either you've been through it or you observed it in other people. You know, I mentioned back in my early mid-twenties, I saw a lot of, like, really amazing young women with losers. Usually losers that were 10, 15 years older than them that had money that they inherited. But they treated, these guys treated these women like trophies, like possessions, and... They would act as, as if, you know, these younger women were so lucky to be with them based on their money because of who this guy's father was or uncle or whomever. And they would thoroughly convince these women, despite the fact they treated them like crap, cheated on them, constantly exploited them, that they could never do any better. That the best they could ever do was to be on their arm because that you know, that would lead to whatever they want in life as if everything that matters in life is based on money and materialism, which to most people it isn't. But of course, to a narcissist, happiness equals stuff. The more stuff you have means the happy you, happier you are. Look what I have that you don't have. That makes me better than you. It doesn't matter if I, if I didn't earn it. I'm better than you because look at all my stuff. Whoever dies with the most toys wins, one of the boomer mantras. So, in these situations, you have to listen to your own intuition 
you know deep down that there's something wrong. You know this is now it's supposed to be. And you, if you get to the point where others around you are starting to come up to you and tell you that something's wrong before you even admit it to, admit it to yourself, then you know deep down that gut feeling, that intuitive thought is right, and you have to act on it. Because if a narcissist is wanting you not to realize your own self-worth, the last thing in the world they want for you to do is to start to realize that and to stand up for yourself, to know your own potential, to know your own self-worth, to know you can do better, to know that you would be much better off outside of that situation, that that situation is not the best you can do. It is, in fact, what is holding you back. And that you will never actually know your true self-worth or live up to your own potential until you get out of that situation. So when realizing that, the best thing to do is, you know, an INFJ to door slam the person, of course. But go no contact. Get out of that situation don't listen to what they have to say. They'll throw, you know, idle threats and they'll try to convince you one last time of how lucky you are to be in the situation you're in and how great it is and they'll make false promises. Don't listen to it. Just get out. The narcissist is a grifter. They mooch off of other people. They exploit other people to do their work for them. They treat people like possessions, like property, all the while with a acting as if they're such a superior being when they're not. Deep down, they know what they are. They know, they know that, that it's all a house of cards, and that is why a lot of times they target INFJs, because deep down, you know, if, well, at least a healthy INFJ can see right through them and is liable to call them out in an INFJ rage, as one does. But that's what you have to realize when you're in a situation where a narcissist doesn't want you to know your self-worth. They will rely on you at the same time, beat you down and tell you that you're worthless while they're relying on you to do all their res or most of their responsibilities for them. I like the first version of this video better, but it didn't record, sadly. No, you have to know these situations when you're in it. And if you've been in these situations, if you see someone else in a similar situation, it is your duty of, of your own integrity to pull that person aside and let them know what's going on. Because then it'll click in that person and they can get out of that situation. Do not believe the narcissist. Know what a narcissist is. Know the red flags. And above all else, get out of the situation. Thank you for everybody who took the time to watch this. Uh, please like and subscribe so my videos can help reach and help other people. Any questions, please comment below. And never sell out your integrity. Always trust your intuition. Know your self-worth. Don't believe the narcissist. See them for what they are. A horrible person who exploits others and is nothing more than a grifter.